Good evening. Yes, good evening, not good afternoon, because I started later than usual. <laughs> Welcome to the Daily Chat. This is my episode num this is episode number nine hundred and thirty four. And it happens to be the first night of Hanukkah, which is why I'm doing my broadcast late, because that's where I was early today. But I wanted to do a talk on that theme because Hanukkah is known or Hanukkah depending how you pronounce it, and God knows how it's spelt, there's seventeen different variations of spelling out there, which was an argument we had early today. Um but Hanukkah is actually the festival of lights. So I thought, well, let's talk about the light, as in how to be it, how to bring it, how to serve it, because some of these festivals have a certain esoteric value, and some of these festivals are just lip service. I mean, I know growing up for me, and I'm a lapsed Jew, to be honest, but those festivals were just like, oh, we do these things, okay, without understanding. And yes, I do know the full story about Hanukkah, or at least the historical piece of it. But the, the fundamental piece I want to talk about today is about being the light, because one, it's Sunday, so it is a spiritual talk. We'll see. <laughs> Secondly, this is a festival of lights, and this is, the night, this is the first night tonight, so I thought, well, let's bring it out now. And my, my, my focal point, let me say it that way, about being the light is because the light is something that we all bring, deliver, share, serve, give, embody when we remember to. The thing about the light, as I'm going to call it, which really I would I would dis, I would define as your loving essence, your spiritual self, your compassion, your caring, your um, embrace of other people. That to me is what the light really is about. It's how do you share compassion and light in the world? How do you serve yourself and other people? How do you how do you send yourself in a way that is serving and inspiring, that comes from a good place inside? Because the light is good. Because the darkness is bad, so to speak, if you're using those correlations. So in the idea about the Festival of Lights, which is about being a light bearer, bringer, deliverer, owner, when you recall that, it requires that you are aware of your own light. And this is where it gets interesting. I know many people who um, purport, maybe the right word, state, declare that they're out in the world doing good works and making things happen. <laughs> Meanwhile, their home life, su home life sucks. They are dealing with addictions, or they simply abuse people around them, or they don't bring the same level of um, equanimity and grace and joy and light to those around them when they're at home. That they become everything but that. And that for me is kind of a challenge to watch. And I'm, so I want to teach some suggestions, oh, excuse me, offer some suggestions and teach some keys about how to have the, bring the light home. That's good we're saying it. Yes, how to bring the light home. There we go. <laughs> By the way, if you haven't seen the talks before, I do this every day, and I normally do it at 5 p.m. Pacific time, but because of my earlier festivities at the Hanukkah party, I didn't get to do it when I was planning to, so I postponed it until now. So this is a later broadcast than usual. I'll tell you at the back end, the replays, the normal schedule, where you can catch my other broadcasts, etc., etc. And probably going to put some links in the comments because i got a feeling there's two that I'm thinking about already that seem to resonate with where I'm going with this, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> And I got a little sniffle too, it was around a cat, which I think triggered me tonight. I'll be fine. Thank you for asking. <laughs> so this thing about light being on light bearer at home is we, we are often raised to, to act certain ways out in society. Um, especially if you've done personal growth work like I've done, seminars, workshops, trainings, whatever. Or if you follow a spiritual path, you go to a spiritual center, you go to a church, you go to a place of worship, so to speak, whatever that is for you. There's a tendency to presume that you will be a light bearing person you'll be a generous person a caring person a giving person a compassionate person etc etc but it seems to wear off for people when they leave the building whatever that building is and i've been talking about this for a while in different flavors but i want to talk about the light point of view because it really it really is a central core of the teaching i'm talking about is how do you find the place or how do you bring love and light and compassion to the place inside that hurt. How do you bring healing to yourself? You know, one of my, one of the quotes I remember from a seminar I took a long time ago is that healing is the application of loving to the parts inside that hurt. How often do you do that? When you're feeling emotionally wounded or drained or abused, how often do you spend your time loving yourself to back to wholeness again? Or how much time do you spend judging the other person? Because some people spend a lot of time in the latter rather than the former. And I'm, I'm adamant that if you want to be free, it's got to start with loving yourself. It's got to start with you taking better care of yourself, emotionally, especially. Because that's where 
the light basically in my languaging sources from. So being a light bearer is not just giving the light to other people and shining the light out there. It's requiring you to be a bearer of light internally. So you're bringing the light from inside out versus like lighting from somewhere else and keeping it outside outside you somewhere else. Now, let me just say this. I spent a long time doing that, like being a light bearer that didn't affect, didn't shine on me, it shone on other people because I thought somehow that I had to do that to be selfless and to be um, not egoically driven. What I didn't realize and what I'm teaching, someone's so passionate about teaching that because a lot of people don't get this, is the light has to come from inside or otherwise it's fake, it's ineffective and it's draining. When we source from inside, that light is infinite, it is endless, it is eternally sourced. If you want to get woo-woo with me, <laughs> a little woo-woo could be fun. But the thing I want to speak to is that for many people, this training that we have, that it's okay to shine the light on somebody else, but not shine it ourselves, is really barbaric in some ways. We really are, um, I say this in a simple way. <laughs> well, we've been trained backwards, it's pretty simply. We're trained to think that light has to be given to other people. Now, some people think that when they're giving the light from themselves to other people, it's, it's coming from spirit, something else. But here's the key to know if you are or not. If you're sourced truly inside with that light you're bringing forward, if you're sourced internally from a dark, higher place or an internal space to, to push, share, generate, give light out to the world, do you feel like you could do it for days and days and days without any effort? Or do you feel like you get drained or you get used up or you get um, extinguished in a way? If it's the latter, you're not doing it right. In fact, if you're doing the latter, you're not actually plugged into the source. And that's the thing. It's like the idea of having a battery or... Um, I'm just thinking of an analogy, maybe a laptop. Let's start with a battery first. If you're a battery and you're being drained out and people are using your, your, your juice and you're being used all the time, you feel like you're being the source. But unless you plug into the source inside, as you get recharged, you'll be drained empty. Yeah, that analogy works. So that's the thing. So you have to imagine, I would suggest you imagine that we are basically like batteries of love, of light, of joy, of expression, of compassion, of caring, etc., etc. We can only give what we already have. When we give from what we don't have, we end up being used up. We end up being drained. We end up having nothing to give anymore because we've given it all out. So learning how to tap inside to the love, the light, compassion, care, joy, etc., 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 that is within us, when we tap into that, then we can express from a much deeper place, and it is a place from which there is no um, exhaustion. It's a place you can give from effortlessly and, and continuously, because you are not doing it yourself. You're becoming a conduit for it, you're becoming an avenue for it, you're becoming a, a director of it in a way, and that's healthy. That's potent because the thing about doing that is when you do source from inside that way, you benefit from the radiance you're putting out. And as I said at the beginning, being focused on taking care of yourself first and then take care of other people, as that's a quote, I'll give you a second, is very much the way to do it. And that quote I was just going to mention from a seminar I took many years ago, which was a foundational teaching, a ground, a ground rule of that seminar, which I still practice and remember and learn 30 something years later, is take care of yourself first and then take care of other people it used to be take care of yourself and take care of other people it's like no 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 no. it's take care of yourself first then take care of other people meaning that you need to be sourcing your light internally fill up yourself fill yourself up first so you then give it to other people because again if you do it to other people they're doing that you're empty out you're drained you're used up you're no longer functional and that's not helping anybody when you're in that place so it's vital to learn how to tap into yourself. It's vital to step into your own autonomy, authority, light, joy, whatever you want to call that. So you can be tapped in to be able to feed through you so you benefit from it and then you share it with the world. I think that's really what I want to say. I mean, that, that really is it. Source inside, connect in deeper, fill up first, then give them the overflow. That's the healthy way to do it. It's kind of like the oxygen mask on the airplane. Do your own oxygen mask first before you do the child's oxygen mask. Same thing applies. One of the questions that comes up in this conversation, because I've had a few people recently, is how do you do that? Which leads me right perfectly into what I'm offering in my new my new um, news news not resolution New Year's offering. 
so one of the ways that I think is most effective to fill up first is to find ways where one, you discover what's in the way of it inside yourself, two, you resolve and heal those parts, and three, you allow the light to flow through you. I have two things I want to recommend. And yes, the things that I do market and sell, so this is selfish and I'm going to tell it, say it that way, something up front with you. One of those is my self-love meditation, which is a guided meditation. Two audio tracks, AM and PM, that you can tune into and listen to every day. They're five minutes each. It doesn't take a long time. But if you do those every day for 30 days, it will transform your relationship with yourself and it will transform your relationship to your own resource inside of light, of love and joy. When you fill up in that place, you can give effortlessly and continuously with no problem at all. Just do the five minutes a day, twice a day for 30 days. That'll be in the comments as an opportunity. It's my self-love guided meditation. Secondly, and what I'm really excited about, is I'm launching, I've been talking about this for a few days now, I'm launching a masterclass in January, January 7th actually, which is a, um, yes, yeah, just I'm checking, January 7th, which is a new three-month masterclass. It's called BFF, which is Balance, Freedom, and, and Flow. It sounds like best friend forever, yes, I understand, but there's, that's actually the subtitle in a way, but I'm not going to tell you that in public, so shh, don't tell anybody. So BFF is my new program. Um, that link in the comments, because if you join me in that program, and it says it will look, is, there's a write-up on it on the webpage, which I'll, again, put the link in the comments. It really is tools and techniques to really learn how to live your life in a place from wholeness, from a place of balance, and allow freedom and flow to be the guidance systems in your life, so that life in all areas flows with joy and effortlessness. So that link in the comments too, because those two things alone, if you do them, will transform your life. And, oh, that's a reminder. If you're watching this broadcast, and you can tell me that you did when you sign up for it, if you do sign up for the, the BFF course, let me know you heard it from this video, because if you do, I'll gift you, as a bonus, the self-love meditation. That's a $100 value right there. I don't have it on my website that way, it's not promoted anywhere, so that's a gift I'm going to give you if you do tell me through that you watch it in this video, because it's an incentive, and it's a gift, and it's the holiday time, so why not be generous? There is another, there is another, another generous benefit there as well and as in ps to that as well there is a special early bird basically i've got i've got staggered pricing depending when you sign up we sign up before christmas as in before wednesday you get the best deal possible so check out the links in the comments as soon as you can again if you saw in the saw my talk here in this video then i'll, I'll include the self-love meditation for free my gift to you so that's that to give you keep you busy recommend it highly check it out um, this is my daily Facebook Live. I normally do it at 5 p.m. Pacific time every day of the week, which is going to happen most of the time this week, but I know Christmas Eve is going to be different because I've got stuff to do. Anyway, I'll announce on my page what I'm doing. Um, if you join me at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page, which is facebook.com slash Barry Selby, you can join me live, interact, comment, etc., etc. Love you to do that. If you're watching the replays, you can watch them on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. You can like my page and follow me there. Um, but there's only about 200, actually less than that, 150, 200 broadcasts at most there, which unfortunately Facebook doesn't show them all. I've been trying to find where they are hidden. They show up beyond my memories, but they're not there. But you can find them all, every single one of them, on my YouTube channel. If you go to youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby, you can subscribe to my channel, and on there's a playlist called Messages for the Masculine. And every single one of my broadcasts is out there, including this one when I put it up there shortly. And you can watch them any way you want. You can sort of search for keywords. You can sort through some titles. You can watch them all if you want. If you're not going out for Christmas, you can definitely watch some of them. And uh, that'll keep you busy for a while. <laughs> it definitely will. So I hope it's made some sense to you and has given you some input, some food for thought, and ideally some guidance. I am biased about my work, my online program, and my masterclass especially because it's a life changer. So I look forward to speaking to you soon. I hope you do check those things out. I invite you to look at them. At least look at the web pages, and the links will be in the comments. Um, and verbally give them now so you have them, which is uh, barrysilver.com is my web website. Forward slash BFF is my is my new court, new court masterclass, which I'm offering to get into right now. And then forward slash self-love is my self-love meditation. Easy enough. Um, but again, I have them in the comments afterwards, so you can check them out there too, just by clicking on them. I um, think that's about it. I appreciate you watching. Thanks for being here. Happy first night of Hanukkah. Um, and as a reminder, as always, please take care of yourself. I'll see you again tomorrow.